Let's take a look at the MT8870 DTMF decoder using a previous project, which was an Arduino Uno PWM audio synthesizer generating DTMF tones. Let's take that audio, feed it into the 8870 DTMF decoder module, and see how fast we can send out different keys and have them successfully detected. I wanted to get a DTMF receiver up and running for a future project where I try to recreate a simulated phone line where I can have maybe a modem generating tones into this simulated phone line. Then I can have a module like this listening on the phone line waiting for DTMF touch tones and then have an Arduino detect what the modem is trying to do and control this simulated phone line. This IC runs at 5 volts, which is good for an Arduino at 5 volts. It takes audio in, has a few support components, and when it detects a valid DTMF signal, it will provide a 4-bit output for the data and generate a signal to indicate data is available, which we can use as an IRQ. By looking at the data pattern on those four Q signals, we can determine which key press was received between 0 and 9, asterisk, pound, and A, B, C, D. For this module, this is the schematic. There's a 3.5 millimeter stereo audio input jack, which only uses the right input as single-ended audio, and this in connection also comes over to this header so we can send audio in here. This would be 5 volts and ground, Q1 to Q4 data, and then we have the data valid output signal as well as an inverted copy, which is convenient depending what we're hooking it up to. This is what my overall test setup looks like. We will look at the receiver sketch after, but for now, this generator, there was a video on this several months ago. I will link to that, but we're going to use a modification of that sketch. So this is a PWM audio synthesizer. We can use pin 11 as a PWM and we can send out two different sine waves at the correct frequencies for a DTMF tone. And here's the PWM filter. We have a 1k resistor, a 10 nano capacitor to ground, and then a 10 micro DC block capacitor in series with the PWM filter for our audio out. And I'm sending the audio to an amplifier to listen to it and to the input of this DTMF decoder. So let's go review how we are generating DTMF tones. The generator sketch is on GitHub. For this sketch, what I want to do is send out all the DTMF tones, 0 through 9, star, pound, A, B, C, D, over and over. And I want them to go at different speeds. So I'm controlling how long the DTMF tone sounds and then how long I wait in silence after before the next tone. So I set up the synthesizer with two channels of audio that are sine waves, and then all I'm really doing in this loop, I start out with a 120 millisecond long tone, followed by 120 millisecond of silence, and then the next tone, and so on, to get all of these DTMF tones generated. So I'm going through the loop several times, starting with this 120 millisecond timing. Brute force, I'm just going and generating each key at that on time. Then I'm waiting in silence for the off time until I've generated all the keys. Then I shorten the interval for the next loop by 10 milliseconds. And we do this enough times so that we are generating the tones so fast that the 8870 can no longer differentiate the tones and then we can see how fast it can receive. The function for this keypad tone generator, I noted up here in the comments, this function was modified and enhanced by a viewer on that original synth DTMF video. So in my main loop, when I'm generating all the tones sequentially, I'm calling 0 through 15, and that generates this sequence of touch tones. And I've noted here, I can't get this or this working yet, but they're here for reference. Maybe I can figure out what's going on. So this Arduino is generating all those DTMF tones. We are hearing them on the amplifier, and at the same time, the 8870 should be detecting these, presenting the proper data to represent whatever key is received, and generating an IRQ every time a new valid DTMF signal has been decoded. And I have a serial monitor set up to show what I'm sending out, 
and what I'm receiving in. Now let's look at the sketch for how we are actually reading in these data lines and converting them into a DTMF character that we can recognize. Looking at the sketch in the receiver, we're waiting for an interrupt and looking at the Q1 to Q4 data inputs and decoding them into the proper DTMF keys. So when an interrupt occurs, we want to set a tone loc flag to say a tone has been located. In the setup, we're using these pins for the interrupt input and the four data pins. Those wire up nicely one to one, so that's why I chose them this way. So pin two is the interrupt, and when we get an interrupt on pin two, rising edge, we will go to the new DTMF interrupt service routine to set that flag. In the interrupt routine, all we do is set the flag that tone has been located. In the loop, if we have located a new DTMF tone, first read in the four Q inputs while data is still valid. After we read in those four Q bits, they are all stored as individual bits with a zero or a one, and we need to construct a single byte called tone data, so we have four zeros, and then Q4, Q3, Q2, Q1. Then we can look at that as a direct number between 0 and 15 and figure out what data we have. To get those four individual bits stored in the correct order in a single byte, each of those individual qubits can be thought of as that qubit being in this position of a byte with all zeros in front. So if we can take Q1 as it is over in this position because that's where it's supposed to be anyway all the way to the right. We leave that alone but for Q2 we want to move Q2 over to this position so that it lands here. So what we need to do is shift this one to the left and Q3 would shift two to the left, Q4 would shift three to the left. Then if we OR all of this together we end up with a single tone data byte that now has Q4, 3, 2, and 1 in this sequence and zeros here, and we can treat it as it is in this table with a number between 0 and 15 and decode what it means. So right here, we are ORing Q1 with Q2 shifted 1 to the left, Q3 shifted 2, and Q4 shifted 3, and that gives us a final tone data that we can look at and we go and decode what character this represents from this function, and that's down here. So we send in that byte that we just constructed, and now we can just look at it as a number between 0 all the way to 15, and send back a character that's a DTMF keypad button. So now we have that stored in key symbol as a character, and we're just printing it out on the serial monitor to confirm what we received. Since I know that I'm receiving this pattern, in order to make it more legible, I want to print all this out on the same line and then go to the next line. So since this line starts with a zero character, if I get that, I just print a message saying I'm receiving, then I get through the whole thing, and when I get to receiving D, I know I'm done that line, so if I've received D, go to the next line and print out another string. And once we've printed out each character, we clear the interrupt flag and wait for a new interrupt and decode the next character. Looking at this data sheet, it looks like we should be able to detect a tone if we are playing it for about 40 milliseconds, and if the pause is 40 milliseconds until the next tone. So let's take a look at this in operation and see how fast we can differentiate tones. It looks like I'm able to consistently detect tones that are 30 milliseconds long with a 30 millisecond pause between. So that's pretty good. And by listening to it, that is more than fast enough for what I ever intended. I just want a modem to be able to dial a number very quickly. And that's easily doable with this. 
Well, I'm impressed with how this is working, and this is going to make a nice project in the future. If you want to see how this whole phone line simulator project ends up working out, be sure to subscribe so you'll know when future videos come out. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you on the next one.